Welcome back to my channel uh, of DCS material. Uh, now this isn't specifically related to DCS, but uh, especially uh, A10, virtual A10 pilots will be hopefully at least marginally familiar with the MGRS system or military grid reference system. Uh, and it seems like there's gonna be more aircraft coming out like the Harrier and the Super Tucano that are probably gonna be using um, MGRS a little more heavily perhaps. So before I start digging into the CDU, the control data unit in the A-10, and starting using all these, uh, what seems like a string of gibberish, letters and numbers and stuff, I wanted to kind of help everybody make sense of it if you've never been exposed to the MGRS. Basically, it's kind of a, uh, I want to say a simpler, almost, I prefer it to latitude, longitude. Latitude, longitude is Bit, you know, you have your, your X coordinate and Y coordinate, and then you, you know, you, if you can graph an X, Y chart, you know, no problem. You can do latitude and longitude, but degrees and seconds are weird. You divide by 60, eh, it's just not a round number. I don't like it. MGRS uses metric system, it's all meters, kilometers, and stuff like that. Um, so it makes it easier, a little more intuitive, and a little more sensible. And you can contain all the information you need in one line. So instead of using two separate lines, if you've ever entered latitude longitude into your CDU, to get any kind of accuracy with it, it's, you know, your latitude, da, 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 you know, and your longitude, you gotta enter that in two separate brackets. MGRS compresses everything down into one line containing much the same information. So it's faster, it's more efficient, and because it's metric system and meters, instead of degrees and minutes and seconds, 360, 60, 60, those are just weird divisions. You know, so this fixes that. Um, you can kind of see where we're going with this. Uh, every, you know, all these letters and numbers here, you're probably familiar with 37T and 38T here in the Caucasus region. But if you're using the Nevada Test and Training Range, you'd be using 11S, 11 Sierra, because it looks like most or all of that is contained within this area here. And you don't have to worry about these grid zones. These are the, the biggest kind of unit of measurement in MGRS is the GZD is like a grid zone, and these are six, uh, six degree by eight degree blocks all around the world. And it gets real funky when you get up into the polar regions, but I don't think DCS is going to be too concerned with that. So let's get back to our familiar uh, Caucasus region. You can, in your A10 CDU, change this, but there's usually not a reason to. We're going to be mostly in 37 Tango. Every now and then we might branch out here into like Nalchik or... Uh, uh, other things I can't pronounce in 38T, but because you can see these letters, they don't really overlap in adjacent squares. They have totally different uh, naming systems. You don't have to worry about entering, you know, duplicate stuff. It's like they knew what they were doing when they designed this. So it's a, it's a really cool system. Anyway, what I want to do to illustrate how it works is to kind of navigate to the rail station in Sukumi using um, MGRS coordinates. So we're going to go within the the grid zone 37T, and let's say in my example, I've already mapped this out, but uh, we're, it's in Foxtrot Hotel. You can see these are, these two letters are basically X and Y respectively. So this is your X component, the first letter, and then the Y component going north. So it's an easting and a northing, that's what they call that. So the easting will be Foxtrot, so we're gonna B, C, D, F, and then north, to hotel E F G H boom Fox Ride Hotel so that's going to be our hundred kilometer square uh, block right here and you can see Sukumi is right there kind of you know in it and you probably hear the JTAC say Fox Ride Hotel Golf Hotel uh, sometimes you'll hear Golf Golf if you're down here you know kind of in the south area uh, so that's where most of the action takes place so that'll give you an idea you know the first two letters you already know kind of generally you know within a hundred square kilometers where you're going to be. And uh, this, if you're confused by anything I say, just go, to, <laughs> just go to freaking Wikipedia and it'll explain everything better than I can. See, this tells you what your precision levels are going to be. This is the best part of the article, in my opinion. So we got two letters. This is the grid, grid zone. Uh, we're not too worried about that in DCS. We're more worried about this part onwards. As you notice, we're always going to be using an even number of letters and numbers. Every line, you've got your 
your letters for the 100 square kilometer block, and every two digits you add to that uh, divides, actually multiplies the precision by 10. So you, you take your units and divide them by 10, if that makes sense. So if you got 10 kilometers, we add two more digits and it divides it down to one kilometer. Pretty straightforward kind of stuff. And we'll see how that works as we get closer to that rail station. Now I've got our handy notepad here. So we're in Foxtrot Hotel. So we want to go to Foxtrot Hotel 66. So, so basically, when they read you the numbers, it's going to be an even number. And you, to kind of imagine, it's going to be 6 by 6, or actually 6 comma 6, if you want to, like, use the mathematical equivalent, if you remember from algebra class. So Foxtrot Hotel 66, as we zoom in, I kind of already know where it is, but um, you can see how that divides that Foxtrot Hotel block into further divisions. So we have six by six, and we're going into this this block right here. See how that works? Just X and Y, that's all it is. And that will get us to within, uh, I believe, uh, 10 kilometers. So this is a 10 kilometer square, which would be enough to get you, you know, that'll navigate you to a city, 10 by 10 square, right? So, we want to get even more precision, so we're going to add one digit to each line, so two digits, digits total. Sorry, that'll get us to within a one kilometer square. So we're going to go to Foxtrot Hotel 6263. Zoom in a little bit until it gives us these uh, the new grid. What did I say it was? 6263? 62 by 63. We're going to zoom in a little bit. 6263. Six, this block right here. See, we can already see the railway station. So, a one kilometer square is actually going to get you to within a pretty big landmark. We can already see the railway station from this amount of zoom. We can see city blocks, there's roughly one by one, or like a third of a mile. Uh, for my fellow Americans, a meter is going to be about a yard. So, I tend to uh, um, just multiply by three to get my feet. Um, so we want to get even closer. Now, now what, when we add, when we go up to six, six digits, that's going to be what our JTAG actually reads us. And we'll see how accurate that is as we zoom in. That gets us to within 100 square meters. Or it's kind of like a square football field. You know, 100, 100 yards by 100 yards. This station... Uh, the particular rail cars I was looking for, if I was going to drop a bomb on them, is going to be Foxtrot Hotel 626-634, 626-634. Look at that right here. Let's see if it redraws this. 626-634, right here. So that's, as you can see, that's pretty damn precise. That's precise enough if you're looking through a targeting pod to find a column of tanks, a rail car, a building, a bunker, uh, anything of that nature, you should be pretty uh, pretty able to find that. And this is what the JTAC is going to read you. They're going to say Foxtrot Hotel 626-634. You put that all on the line, no commas, no spaces. You just go with it. Um, and you get, and that's with a hundred. That's you know, hundred square meters, three hundred by three hundred feet, roughly. So that's that's enough to find pretty much anything you need to uh, if you're flying. Now, if you want to get even more precise and you want to start targeting individual rail cars. You can do that if you go down to, you know, 10 meter precision using eight digits. Uh, what is this going to be? Six, two, three, six. There, let's just uh, zoom in until it gives us that, that amount of precision. Six, two, six. It's Foxtrot Hotel, six, two, six, three, six, three, four, three. Look, I've already got it right there. That's enough to drop... That's enough precision to drop a JDAM and hit a rail car, an individual rail line, as you can see. That's pretty good. Now, you can go to 10 digits, but I don't think this map um, <laughs> zooms in that far. But you can just imagine, divide this square, you know, 10 by 10, and that's down to a meter, three feet roughly. So that's enough to put a JDAM kind of through somebody's window. 
so that's that's pretty good. But I assume it would be pretty possible to divide the meter into tens. You can go to like well, anyway. Don't worry about that. We're, <laughs> we're not going to be worried about it. But that's MGRS. Pretty simple. It's just x y coordinates kind of put on one line. Now, when you enter it into the CDU, it's going to look something like this. Boom. Foxtrot Hotel six two six 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 three four. Boom. And that'll put you right into the rail station within 100, uh, 100 meters. All right, so I hope that helps. Um, and uh, if you have any suggestions, uh, put them in the comments. And uh, this could hopefully kind of set people up to understand MGRS enough to kind of know where we're going with the um, with the CDU. So you're not just typing in letters and numbers and wondering what it all means. All right, again, thanks for watching.